slide to here. All right, good evening, everybody. This is the special meeting of the Downers Grove Grade School District 58 Board of Education here on Monday, May 8th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. at the Downers Grove Village Hall. Melissa, will you please call roll? Member Doshi. Here. Member Ellis. Here. Member Hannes. Here. Member Harris. Here. Member Olchick. Here. Member Weiner. Here. Member Hughes. Here. All right, first up tonight is the approval of minutes. Are there any suggested revisions to the minutes as presented in the packet of materials? All right, if not, is there a motion to approve the minutes of the April 10th, 2023 meeting as presented? So moved. Second. All right, Melissa, please call roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchick. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to approve the minutes of the April 10th, 2023 meeting as presented. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the April 10th, 2023 closed session meeting as presented? So moved and keep them permanently close to the public to the confidential nature of its contents. So moved. Second. 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 All right, Melissa, please call roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchick. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye, the motion carried to approve the minutes of the April 10th, 2023 closed session meeting as presented and keep them permanently close to the public. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the April 24th, 2023 financial and curriculum workshop as presented? So moved. Second. All right, Melissa, please call roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Abstain. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchick. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to approve the minutes of the April 24th, 2023 <clears throat> financial curriculum workshop as presented. Okay. Um, next up, we are going to accept the board election results. Based on the information received from the DuPage County Election Commission, the results of the election held on April 4, 2023, declare that the following candidates elected to their representative offices as members of the Board of Education of Downers Grove Grade School number 58 to serve for four years. Emily Hannes, Stephen Olchek, Kirat Doshi. Now we will go ahead and administer the oath of office. So first up, we'd like to welcome Emily Hannes. Please step down to the podium and read the oath. Raise your right hand and the oath is in front of you. I, Emily Hannes, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Member of the Board of Education of Downers Grove Grade School District 58 in accordance with the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and the laws of the State of Illinois to the best of my ability. I further swear that I shall respect taxpayer interests by serving as a faithful protector of the school district's assets. I shall encourage and respect the free expression of opinion by my fellow board members and others who seek a hearing before the board while respecting the privacy of students and employees. I shall recognize that a board member has no legal authority as an individual and that decisions can be made only by a majority vote at a public board meeting. I shall abide by majority decisions of the board while retaining the right to seek changes in such decisions through ethical and constructive channels. As part of the Board of Education, I shall accept the responsibility for my role in the equitable and quality education of every student in the school district. I shall foster with the board extensive participation of the community, formulate goals, define outcomes, and set the course for Downers Grove Grade School District 58. I shall assist in establishing a structure and an environment designed to ensure all students have the opportunity to attain their maximum potential through a sound organizational framework. I shall strive to ensure a continuous assessment of student achievement and all conditions affecting the education of our children in compliance with state law. I shall serve as education's key advocate on behalf of students and our community's schools to advance the vision for Downers Grove Grade School District 58. And I shall strive to work together with the district superintendent to lead the school district toward fulfilling the vision of the, the board has created, fostering excellence for every student in the areas of academic skills, knowledge, citizenship, and personal development. Congratulations, Member Hannes. Thank you. This time I'd like to call down Stephen Olchek. Please go to the podium, raise your right hand, and take the oath. What she said. <laughs> <laughs> I, Stephen Olchek, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Member of the Board of Education of Downers Grove Grade School District 58 in accordance with the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and the laws of the State of Illinois to the best of my ability. 
I further swear that I shall respect taxpayer interests by serving as a faithful protector of the school district's assets. I shall encourage and respect the free expression of opinion by my fellow board members and others who seek a hearing before the board while respecting the privacy of students and employees. I shall recognize that a board member has no legal authority as an individual and that decisions can be made only by a majority vote at a public board meeting. I shall abide by majority decisions of the board while retaining the right to seek changes in such decisions through ethical and constructive channels. As part of the Board of Education, I shall accept the responsibility for my role in the equitable and quality education of every student in the school district. I shall foster with the board extensive participation of the community, formulate goals, define outcomes, and set the course for Downers Grove Grade School District 58. I shall assist in establishing a structure and an environment designed to ensure that all students have the opportunity to attain their maximum potential through a sound organizational framework. I shall strive to ensure a continuous assessment of student achievement and all conditions affecting the education of our children in compliance with state law. I shall serve as education's key advocate on behalf of students and our community school to advocate our community schools to advance their vision for Downers Grove Grade School District 58. And I shall strive to work together with the district superintendent to lead the school district toward fulfilling toward fulfilling the vision of the board has created, fostering excellent for excellence for every student in the areas of academic skills, knowledge, citizenship, and personal development. Congratulations. <laughs> and Kirat Joshi, if you please step up to the podium, raise your right hand and take the oath of office. I, Kirath Doshi, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Member of the Board of Education of Downers Grove Grade School District 58 in accordance with the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and the laws of the State of Illinois to the best of my ability. I further swear that I shall respect taxpayer interests by serving as a faithful protector of the school district's assets. I shall encourage and respect the free expression of opinion by my fellow board members and others who seek a hearing before the board while respecting the privacy of students and employees. I shall recognize that a board member has no legal authority as an individual and that decisions can be made only by a majority vote at a public board meeting. I shall abide by majority decisions of the board while retaining the right to seek changes in such decisions through ethical and constructive channels. As part of the Board of Education, I shall accept the responsibility for my role in the equitable and quality education of every student in the school district. I shall foster with the board extensive participation of the community, formulate goals, define outcomes, and set the course for Downers Grove Grade School District 58. I shall assist in the establishing of a structure and an environment designed to ensure all students have the opportunity to attain their maximum potential through a sound organizational framework. I shall strive to ensure a continuous assessment of student achievement and all conditions affecting the education of our children in compliance with state law. I shall serve as education's key advocate on behalf of students and our community schools to advance the vision of Downers Grove Grade School District 58. And I shall strive to work together with the district superintendent to lead the school district toward fulfilling the vision of the board that the board has created, fostering excellence for every student in the areas of academic skills, knowledge, citizenship, and personal development. Congratulations, Member Bush. All right, we now welcome comments from our reelected members, starting with Member Hannes. So I just want to say thank you, obviously, to the community of 58, all the constituents who entrusted me with another four years on the board. Um, education's always been one of my passions, and I look forward to another four years of working with all of you guys. and just continuing to make progress in, in making District 58 even even better as we go on. So thank Welcome you. back. back. Member Olszak. Um, yeah, truly honored, super pumped to serve another four years. Um, I guess I wanna say I selfishly learned a lot about communication and relationships over these last four years. So I just wanna say thank everyone for, for uh, this, this great team and and uh, the great relationships that I've developed over the last four years. So 
truly excited to, to build on this progress. I think we've done a lot of great work as a team over the last four years, and I think the, the key for me is, is making sure we build upon that and not kind of um, lose any of the steam that we've, we've developed over that time. So thank you. Thank you. Member Goshi? Yeah, I just want to say thank you to the community. Take it very seriously to serve in this role um, as your voice uh, and to represent what is best for our students in uh, furthering public education. Uh, I get to do that as part of my day job and on the school board, and I, I pinch myself because I consider myself very lucky. Uh, and to serve with you all uh, is an honor. Uh, so let's get to work. Thank you. All right, now this is an opportunity for members of the audience to share comments with the board. Um, I don't think we have any comment cards. Is there anyone present today that would like to make a public comment? All right, then that brings us to the end of this first meeting. So I need a motion to adjourn Sendai. So moved. Second. All right, Melissa, will you please call roll? Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried. Meeting is now adjourned and die at 6.41 p.m. President and Board Secretary to serve as President Pro Tem and Secretary Pro Tem until we elect new officers. All right, then this is now the reorganization meeting of the Downers Grove Grade School 58 uh, Board of Education here on Monday, May 8, 2023 at 6.42 p.m. at Downers Grove Village Hall. Melissa, please call roll. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member oh, Harris. Aye. I'm here. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> here. <We'll play. laughs> member Olchik. Uh, member Weiner. Here. And this member Hughes. Aye. All right. First up is the election of a president. It, I will now. Uh, I will now open up the nominations for president of the board. Uh, I'd like to uh, make the motion to nominate uh, current president. Uh, Darren Hughes. Thank you. I second. Any other nominations? All right, if there's no other nominations, um, I'm going to go ahead and close the nominations now. Uh, there is a motion on the table to elect uh, Darren Hughes, uh, and he has been nominated to serve as president of District 58 Board of Education. Melissa, will you please call roll? Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried on the election of president of the board. Next up I have I need to open up the nominations for vice president. Are there any nominations? I would like to nominate Greg Harris as our vice president. Second. Are there any other nominations? I will now close the nominations. I now have a motion for Greg, that Gregory Harris has been nominated to serve as Vice President of District 58 Board of Education. Melissa, will you please call roll? Member Joshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried. The President and Vice President now may officially take their seats. Doesn't involve much movement. <laughs> <laughs> Stand up and sit back down. Yeah. All right. Uh, first up, is there a motion to approve the establishment of the board secretary stipend at nine thousand three hundred eighty-seven dollars and thirty-five cents for the twenty twenty-three through twenty twenty-four school year, and the stipend for the twenty twenty-four through twenty twenty-five school year to be determined based on the approval, uh, the approved pay rate increase for administrators in twenty-four through twenty-five. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All right, Melissa, please call roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to approve the establishment of a board secretary stipend of nine thousand three hundred eighty-seven dollars and thirty-five cents for the twenty twenty-three through twenty twenty-four school year, and the stipend for the twenty twenty-four through twenty twenty-five school year to be determined based on the approval approved pay rate increase for administrators in the twenty twenty-four. 2025. Uh, next up is the appointment of a secretary. Is there a motion to appoint Melissa Jervis, a secretary for District 58 Board of Education for a two-year term? So, so moved. moved. Second. Okay. <laughs> All right, any discussion? Melissa, please call roll. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. 
Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to appoint Melissa Jervis as board secretary for a two-year term. Next up is to establish a regular meeting date, time, and place. Is there a motion to establish the regular meeting date of the Board of Education as the second Monday of each month at 7 p.m. at the Downers Grove Village Hall? The fourth Monday of each month shall be reserved for consideration for items concerning instructional programming or other aspects of the district operations, which may require more detailed consideration. So moved. Second. Hold on. These workshop meetings <laughs> will be held at school sites. Is there a motion? So moved. <laughs> Second. All right, any discussion? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, we got, we got a nice rhythm going. <laughs> yeah. Member Weiner. Hi. <laughs> Member Doshi. Hi. Member Ellis. Hi. Member Hannes. Hi. Member Harris. Hi. Member Olchik. Hi. Member Hughes. Hi. A motion carried to establish the dates, times, and places for regular meetings of the board. You think we are new at this? <laughs> <laughs> and just as a point of clarification, um, all our regular meetings will be at the Village Hall next year. It was uh, more available next year than it was uh, this year. We will still have our workshop meetings at O'Neill Middle School. Cool. All right. Next up is the announcement of the committee assignments. These have stayed pretty. Um, similar to last year. So we have the policy committee, which will be chaired by Gregory Harris with uh, Tracy Weiner as the second member on that one. A legislative committee will be chaired by Emily Hannes with Melissa Ellis. Uh, the district leadership team will be chaired by Tracy Weiner with Kirat Doshi. Financial advisory committee will be chaired by Darren Hughes and uh, with Stephen Olchuk. Uh, the IASB representative delegate will be Emily Hannes. The LEND representative will be Gregory Harris. The SASIT governing board representative will be Emily Harris. The SASID Governing Board Alternative Representative will be Gregory Harris. Did, uh, did I? Emily Hannes? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to start any controversy. <laughs> um, SASID Governing Board Alternative Representative would be Gregory Harris. SASID Board of Directors Alternative Representative would also be Gregory Harris. Health and Wellness Committee Liaison would be Gregory Harris. Education Foundation Representative would be Kirat Doshi. And the Village of Downers Grove Plan Commission would be Darren Hughes. Uh, any comments or discussion on those. Okay. And we need to go ahead and officially elect our SASID board rep and alternative rep. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution appointing Gregory Harris as alternative representative to the SASID board of directors and appointing Emily Hannes as the representative and Gregory Harris as the alternative representative to the SASID governing board? So moved. Second. All right, any discussion on that? All right, Melissa, please call roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to adopt the resolution appointing Gregory Harris as the alternative res representative for the SASID Board of Directors and appointing Emily Hannes as the representative and Gregory Harris as the al alternate representative for the SASID Governing Board. All right. This is now an opportunity for public comment. There's an opportunity for members of the audience to share comments with the board. I do not believe I saw nope. anyone come in and turn any cards. Is anyone who would like to make a comment on this meeting? <laughs> All right. Then is there a motion to adjourn? So, so moved. moved. Second. All right, Melissa, please go roll. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member <coughs> Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. Um, the meeting is now adjourned at 6.49 p.m. This is now the regular meeting of the Downers Grove Grade School District 58 Board of Education here on Monday, May 8th, 2023 at 6.49 p.m. at the Downers Grove Village Hall. This meeting is being live streamed for the public on the Village of Downers Grove's YouTube channel. Melissa, will you please call roll? Member Doshi. Here. Member Ellis. Here. Member Hannes. Here. Member Harris. Here. Member Olchik. Here. Member Weiner. Here. Member Hughes. Here. Tonight, members of the audience will have an opportunity to provide public comment to the board later on in the agenda. The board asks anyone wishing to comment to please fill out a card and indicate the topic to be addressed. These can be placed in the basket on the table over there to my right, and I have allotted 30 minutes tonight for public comment. All right, we are going to start off this meeting as we always do with the Pledge of Allegiance, so I'd like to welcome up the Student Council from Leicester School. If you please stand up towards the podium so we can hear you. I 
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I'd like to welcome up now Principal Novosel. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. We're very excited to have our student council representatives here. And we also have our PTA president and PTA vice president. And then we also have our student council teacher leaders too. So um, we can get started. Oh, <laughs> this is way fancier than what I'm used to. <laughs> All right, uh, first we have our student council representatives. We have our um, president, Ms. Lizzie Reifenberg, Vice President, Sam Triani, and our secretary, Maddie Carter. Our treasurers are Grant Kelsey and Maggie Roth. They're not with us tonight, but they are in that picture right there for you. So I'll let you guys get started. So our fall uh, student council events, uh, our first one was Hats for Hurricanes. So we allowed students to wear hats during school hours and they would have to bring in a dollar or more. And we raised over $600 um, for victims of Hurricane Ian. And then our second um, student council uh, event was sticker sales where we designed stickers and the student body could buy stickers for uh, $3 and we raised over $1,200 and get, gave gift cards to families in need in our community. Student Council winter events included Giving Tree, which was in December. Leicester students collected new hats, scarves, mittens, and socks and toys um, that were donated to the Sharing Connections of Downers Grove. We also did the Super Bowl, which was held in February, and we collected cans and boxes of food that, donate, that were donated to the People's Resource Center of DuPage. In the spring, we did Watts of Love, which was in April, and classes were challenged to each raise at least $50 to buy solar lights and help people around the world raise themselves out of poverty. As a school, we raised $2,350, enough for 47 lights. We also have the Pop Tab Collection, which took place this month, and students are encouraged to bring in as many Pop Tabs as possible to donate to the Ronald McDonald House Charities. All right, we also have, we also have our PTA president, um, Miss Kristen Avery, and our other Kristen, our PTA president-elect, Kristen Wickland, and she's also our treasurer. So we'll let them share some things with you. Okay, so we have been super busy at Leicester this year. Um, we hosted our first ever variety show, and we just had our first Leicester World's Fair last week, where kids got to um, walk through the school and experience cultures from all over the world, um, take a little goodie bag home, and learn all sorts of things about um, the world. Uh, we also offered Science Olympiad. That's a beloved event every year. It's um, it's a big one and everybody seems to love it. And then we did a family reading night where we brought in a lady that had bats and sloths and all, all sorts of things and that was a big hit with our families too. Um, we also gave away five $1,000 scholarships to um, senior Lester alumni. We've worked with the Lester community and staff to bring back one book, one school. So we're all currently reading the same book um, and the teachers are walking the students through that. Um, we sold a record number of tickets to our winter fundraiser and raised tons and tons of money for the PTA. We got our students moving at our fall fundraiser, the annual fall fun run, and we earned platinum star level from the Illinois PTA for 2022-23 membership year. So it's been a great year and we have lots and lots of things planned for the rest of this year still and next. So that's it. Thank you. Yes, we are very lucky to have an amazing PTA. So shout out to them. 
just a little bit of data. So IAR, obviously the most recent data we have from that is from the spring. And just the next couple of slides are kind of just to explain where our instructional leadership team went with where our goals were for this year. So our starting point was to look at our IAR and MAP data. This is a report from ECRA. And if you look at there, it does show our overall ELA growth um, is, I mean, expected growth, but it was a little bit below where we would like it to be. Um, and math was above expected growth. So our ILT agreed that reading would be our, our area that we were going to delve into further. Thank you. I keep looking at you to move on. Sorry. <laughs> I'll get it. Um, okay, so then once we got in there, the other, this is a report that I love from ECRA because when you click on an insights tab, it gives you even further information about specifics of where students fell. Um, and this specifically was a very telling report for us because we were able to see expressions and conventions as areas where we didn't have as many kids expected growth. Um, if you look at those two areas that are circled in black, these are just two of our grade levels, but all of our grade levels were pretty consistent in those two areas as needing some support, which means our writing instruction was where we wanted to focus our attention. This is our overall map reading from spring. So as you can see, every grade level was pretty consistently lower than expected growth. So it was definitely pretty eye-opening for us because at Leicester we're not used to seeing yellow, um, but it was a good report for us to see and gave us a good focus area for our ILT. Then if you look at our winter from reading, you can see that based on where we picked our goal, we did the right area. Um, everything that we have implemented this year has made some, some gains and so we're definitely more in the expected growth range. We're excited to see where our spring map goes. So we're hoping to see those even a little bit higher in terms of growth. And same with our IAR. We're really hoping that um, once we see that spring IAR data, the conventions and expressions area really pops and we get to see our focus that Mrs. Smith is going to talk about uh, really shine. Some highlights of our Leicester school life, other than our goal areas, which obviously we're always talking about and working with. Um, our classroom buddies this year, we started doing, we used to do Leicester families, um, but it ended up being something we wanted to try buddies. We had a pretty good experience with it before we did families, so we tried our buddies and that seemed to go very well. So we have older grades paired with younger grades and they meet regularly to do either SEL activities or some type of a literary activity. Sometimes we include writing um, since that is our focus area as well. We also have uh, monthly focus areas and in the past at Leicester we've always had a character trait of the month but this year we tried to tie that in with our um, student recognition. So our spotted being good, anyone who's been inside of Leicester knows when you walk in you see our spotted being good board. Students earn spotted being goods, but we decided to tie that to our monthly focus area. So it really made it connect for students. So on our cards it actually says be respectful, be responsible, be safe, and those are the areas that every month we're focusing in on. Um, and then that way when they hear their names on the announcements, um, they get to be excited about making all of those good choices. Um, our sixth graders are actually now taking over our announcements, which has been awesome uh, addition this year. And they still are our patrol leaders. Uh, we're excited to have a lot of great leaders in our sixth grade group this year. The other shout out is our monthly celebrations. Dr. Russell came to see one. So um, it, it was a, a, it's a fun time for the kids. We play music. Uh, some of, sometimes they dance in their seats. And um, we give out prizes. And then we also kind of review what, were, what was our monthly focus from the previous month, what's our monthly focus for this month. And we review those expectations during that time as well. And it's been a really good addition to our day. Hello, I'm Laurie Smith, the assistant principal at Leicester Elementary School. And so I will be talking through our school improvement goals. So we had two goals that we focused on this year and we talked about both of them a little bit throughout this presentation already. Um, our writing goal, so we um, focused in on um, our data and picked writing as an area of focus for ourselves, um, improving writing during the 2022-2023 school year. Um, in all instructional environments throughout the building. 
And then also our culture goal, um, making sure that we're continuing a positive culture and fostering um, a positive culture among our building staff, students, families, all of that. So when we're talking about our writing goal, we talked a little bit about the work of our instructional leadership team, but we, um, we dug into data with our team. Uh, we meet regularly with the team, and the team really has taken a leadership role preparing presentations and professional learning for the rest of our staff to um, really focus on some writing strategies that they can take into classrooms. Um, we really tried to focus in on something that's going to supplement no matter what we do with our writing curriculum and what um, that looks like going forward. And uh, they also focused on incorporating opportunities for staff to follow up with activities and have opportunities to talk about the strategies that they were implementing in the classroom um, across the building. And then, and truly making sure that it was consistent throughout the entire building, something that can be generalized from kindergarten to sixth grade. Um, we also did a fall, winter, and spring three-minute writing sample so that we can measure growth throughout the year. Um, where we are starting that spring writing sample now so that we can compare um, over time to see what our progress looks like on actual writing samples. And then we talked a lot about the climate stuff, but I'll, I'll recap some of the things that we're doing to um, encourage that positive um, positivity in our building. So we do uh, positive recogni recognition of students through that spotted being good that's tied to our monthly character traits. Um, we have our daily announcements where we're announcing those spotted being goods and we're having students be part of that recognition and our monthly lunchroom celebrations. We um, have the Lester Staff Star Award where it gets a little bit emotional and people, <laughs> people recognize each other for their efforts and their dedication to students and their dedication to their work. Um, and uh, we all meet in the lounge before school and do a quick uh, star award. and. Uh, it's, it's a really exciting and fun time. Um, and then, of course, our staff can also be spotted for being good as well. Uh, we have, oh, and what I did want to mention, too, our students started <laughs> recognizing people, and they're assigning spotted being goods to each other and <laughs> staff now, too. So it's kind of fun to see, you know, students, when we're reading those spotted being goods, they're, you know, patrol students are um, assigning them to people, too. It's, it's pretty neat to see. Uh, we have all school spirit days that we have students vote on and we have spirit weeks of course uh, to keep that positivity going in our building and then we also are doing a lot of self-care focus with our staff we have a bingo board in the lounge where we have self-care activities that they can engage in and if they get bingo they get a prize um, we just recently had a wellness challenge where we're um, incorporating healthy eating and exercise and all of that and challenging each other to do better we have fun Fridays um, every other Friday on, in the morning before school. We meet in the lounge and try not to talk about work and just try to talk about fun things with each other. And then, of course, we have luncheons, staff luncheons, to celebrate our staff. So, anything else to add? No, that's it. Thank you guys so much for having us. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We do have some gifts for our student council members. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Nice job. All right, listed on tonight's agendas are two communications received by the board. Are there any additional communication board members would like to share at this time? No. All right, that brings us to the reports of the board. First up is the superintendent report with Dr. Russell. Thank you. So, special thanks to the Lester student staff and families as they uh, exit tonight. Uh, Katie and Lori, we just want to thank you for your report and talking about some things that you're working on, but also all the highlights at Lester School uh, for being our largest elementary school. It still has that real small school feel, so we appreciate everything you do and thank you for being here at the board meeting this evening. 
I also want to congratulate members Hannah Solchek and Dochi on a, another four years, um, and Darren and Greg for election uh, to your officer positions. As Steve said, we built on uh, a lot of successes the last four years, and we want to continue to do that for the next four. So we're very excited for the upcoming strategic planning process, which will be a springboard uh, for that. So again, congratulations on members who just won their re-election. Uh, we're excited to work with you for another four years. In terms of personnel, at this point, 77% of our families have registered for the upcoming school year. If you've not registered yet, please complete the process as soon as possible. Um, as we get 100% of our families to register for school, that allows us to complete the hiring process, the um, finalizing of sections, and we really need that information as soon as possible. So if you haven't done that yet, please go ahead and fill that out, and our principals will continue to encourage our families to go ahead and complete that. In terms of curriculum and instruction, uh, at the last curriculum workshop, we highlighted the work around ELA, and Justin Sissel shared with the board that we are gonna be recommending a writing resource for the board. Um, you may notice that that is not on tonight's agenda. We are required by board policy to um, have that on display for 30 days, and so that will be at both the Donners Grove Public Library and our district office if anyone wants to view those materials, and then we will bring those in June for final approval so that we can go ahead and be prepared for the start of the school year. Year. Also today begins our spring uh, benchmarking assessment window, so over the next three weeks students will be administered our AIMS Web and Map assessments in math and reading. We look forward to sharing the results of those assessments uh, at the June board meeting. In terms of finance, uh, many of you probably are already well aware of this. Our tax bills were sent out, so everyone in DuPage County would have received their tax bills. Just a reminder, the tax increases this year are for two things. The first are the bonds for the uh, referendum. The second thing would be our annual tax levy. And we, we do sometimes get questions about, is the board limited to what they can tax every year? We are in uh, what's called PTEL, which is the Property uh, Tax Extension Limit Law, which um, prohibits any district in DuPage County from levying more than the consumer price index or 5%, whichever is less. And then of course, new construction gets added to that. I think one of the things that was particularly challenging for any school district this year is the CPI was at a historic level. It was well above uh, 5%, so that was the typical increase that you would have seen throughout school districts. Um, but combined with the referendum, certainly when people saw their tax bills, they may have had questions. Um, so if you do have questions about your tax bill, please feel free to reach out to the district office. Our assistant superintendent of business, Todd Drayfall, will be happy to answer any questions that you have regarding your uh, taxes. In terms of our technology department, they are uh, busy preparing for the summer. It still feels funny saying that, but we are almost at the end of the school year. And so they are doing everything from preparing iPads to setting up our new Chromebooks and installing new wireless access points, which we're excited about, and then uh, Apple TVs and projector uh, maintenance. So lots of work over the summer for our technology team. Special services, one of the things that we recognized um, that I think we are frustrated with, but certainly our families were frustrated with, were some of the transportation issues that we had at the beginning of the year, especially around uh, our students with special needs. Jessica Stewart and her team are working extremely hard with Sunrise, which is our special education transportation provider, to make sure that we iron out any glitches that we would have experienced last year. Um, one of the things that we've got Sunrise to commit to, if they can have everyone's transportation plans prior to June 1st for the upcoming school year, they will be able to deliver those on the first day of school. Anything after that becomes uh, a little bit more challenging to figure out by the first day of school, so we are asking all of our families to make sure that they communicate with the proper people at the school to get those in prior to June 1st so we can iron out any of those things. And I really appreciate Jessica and Sonali Paddle for really working hard to smooth out those transportation uh, issues. In terms of facilities, you may have seen an article yesterday in the Chicago Tribune that talked about lead testing uh, in the water at public schools. This is a law that in 2017, any school uh, up until fifth grade had to perform lead testing on any source of water into the uh, building. That meant a, a sink, a drinking fountain, um, et cetera. So of course, District 58 um, you know, complied with this law. We also tested our middle schools because we wanted to test all of our schools. That was the only requirement that you had to do in 2017. We are committed to ongoing testing though, and so we have continued that testing. If anyone is interested in seeing our testing results, you can view those on our website. We post all of those uh, for the public to see. And of course, if any um, water source does have a limit above what is acceptable, we take that offline. I want to thank Kevin Bardo. I know that we were um, sought out by the Tribune for um, because we do extra testing in our school districts, and so Kevin really did a nice job working with the reporter from the Tribune on that article. So thank you, Kevin. 
In terms of public relations, we are very uh, happy to share that we had uh, Select 58 uh, last week and we honored several students from Herrick and O'Neill Middle School. Uh, it was a great evening, very well attended by our families and it's always a great opportunity to recognize students that um, go above and beyond in service to their community. So it was a very fun night. I want to thank Faith Bear and Drew Nastel from the Education Foundation for organizing the event. Um, like I said, it was a wonderful evening and uh, we were very excited about it. Uh, coming up next week, we have Distinguished Service Awards on Monday, which will be fun, and that's where families get to nominate an outstanding staff member who's made an impact on their lives or their students' lives, and so we're very excited about that. Uh, both of these events are really great examples of how we work very closely with the Education Foundation and our families and uh, to recognize the great work that takes place in our school district. Uh, just as a reminder, next Monday and Tuesday evening, uh, we'll have approximately 100 members of the community combined with our administrative team and our board for strategic planning. And that's where we're going to really start to set that high level direction for our school district for the next five years. Uh, I want to thank everyone who filled out the survey. The survey is now closed, but we certainly will, just like we do with the majority of our surveys, make that public, including the open-ended uh, comments. And, and so we're uh, busy right now redacting any personal information that would have been identified in those uh, comments but we will put that information out there uh, so that the community can see how um, people responded to that and what they'd like to see in terms of the direction for the school uh, district for the next five years. And then finally, I want to thank Melissa Jervis. If you've noticed tonight, we have four meetings in one evening. Uh, she's done a great job uh, over the last several weeks preparing for that meeting with, uh, with myself and Darren and, and really putting everything together. And uh, she does a great job, and we're very appreciative of uh, her hard work. So thank that you. concludes the superintendent's report. Wonderful. Any questions or comments? All right, and that brings us to the monthly business and treasurer's report. Welcome, Mr. Dreyfus. Good evening. You have a year to date report. This is uh, just the time where we're at our low cash point of the year uh, as we wait for the early tax money to come in. So uh, we are in good shape, uh, but this is just at our, at our bottom point. So uh, there are a few things to cover on the uh, agenda for this, uh, the, uh, this evening. Uh, one, the financial plan that the board had seen previously. Uh, in a presentation form, this is in more of the written form. Uh, it is also was also presented to the Financial Advisory Committee um, and reviewed at the last meeting with them. Um, that is for action. That is our, our big planning piece that goes into our budget uh, that the board will then see uh, for a budget for fiscal year 24 in August and, and September. You also have uh, a budget that we will be having a hearing on. You'll have a hearing on for the amended budget for fiscal year 23. This is a presentation, or a, is on there for uh, your review. Uh, that will be posted um, for 30 days. We'll have a notice, and then that'll be uh, up for approval in June. That is due to the fact that we had uh, the referendum passage, uh, the bond sale, and then the increase in expenditures uh, in capital uh, for that piece. A couple other things we have, our construction mode this summer is about playgrounds. As we continually plan for the large summers to come, uh, this summer is about playgrounds and you see uh, more work uh, that is on there for approvals for both the agreements uh, with the uh, citizens group and, and parents and so forth, and also the construction uh, and opening of bids for the uh, installation of, of, of the playground equipment. Uh, last piece we have is uh, the owner's rep uh, contract, and that is something that we have talked about uh, with the board the last couple of months. Uh, this is the last of the, um, the group for the large project. Uh, White and Company is the architect for the, for the district. Uh, through the <coughs> process, we uh, contracted with Bully and Andrews as our construction manager at risk. And um, we have a uh, contract to recommend for uh, Huffman and Keel, Huffman, Keel, and uh, partners. Um, and Mike Huffman is here. Um, this is, we went through an RFP, RFQ process in evaluating. We had uh, three firms. We went through uh, and fully uh, vetted out and referenced uh, two. And, um, Huffman Keel was the one that uh, the 
the district felt uh, staff felt comfortable with they are to assist and work with us uh, as the owner's rep uh, to oversee uh, the construction process uh, work with the architect work with the uh, CM um, help with the move management and a lot of other things that will be going on uh, through what will be some very tight very busy summers uh, coming in the next couple of years so Mike if you want to stand up and just say <laughs> just, just stand up. He did what you asked him to do. <laughs> this is usually the Bardo's side, so you know, I. <laughs> you want to just introduce so, yourself, Mike? Sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mike Huffman, Huffman Keel Partners. Um, really appreciate being here tonight. The confidence that the administration has placed in us. Um, we, we hope uh, that we gain your approval and. Uh, go down this uh, uh, tremendous path that you'll be on over the next couple of years uh, in uh, advancing the responsibility with your community to provide the best built environment. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for being here tonight. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and if there are any other questions? <laughs> nope, I think we're good. Thank you. Thank you. Right, we're going to go ahead and move on to the committees. Um, the report uh, the first one up is the policy committee. They met on April 18th, 2023. Member Weiner. Um, yes, we met on Tuesday morning at bright and early at 7 a.m. And one of the beauties of adopting this press, uh, press plus policy that we have is that a lot of it uh, is taken care of for us. And the majority of the updates of this particular press issue were um, regarding face law, which is that um, the guidelines for appropriate conduct for educators and requirements for reporting abuse and neglect. So that was an extensive part of the updates that we talked about. And then we also talked about um, several other policies um, related to specifically medicine to students and sick days and vacations. But the, the bulk of it was face law. There's one thing I want to note on here on this minute. Greg, Greg is not listed. Just for like for oh thanks and it's not it's, it's a draft okay it's the policy committee okay. hasn't approved okay. it but thank you it shows that it doesn't show that he was absent so just as a side note um, is there anything else that you wanted to add Kevin no I I just echo your comments about fate law this is a, a a law that is intended to really safeguard kids at school and make sure that the people that we not only employ but future employees of the school district go through even a more rigorous background check. And so both Jane uh, Uzentis and Justin Sissel are in the process of um, you know, complying with this law because uh, come July 1st, there are several things that our personnel office will have to do before making a hiring recommendation uh, to the board, uh, which includes seeking out previous employers to make sure there weren't any things or there isn't anything in a, a prospective candidate's background uh, that would prohibit them from working with children, which we do background checks now. This actually takes it a step further. So we are going to be in full compliance with all of those uh, laws. And as I said, Justin and Jane are already working through all of that. Any questions or comments? All right, then we do have an item up for first reading. It's press issue 111, policies 5, 330 and 7 to 70. Is there a motion to approve the fir for first reading the policies and press issue 111 and policies 5, 330 and 7 to 70 as presented in the attached drafts? Do you have a motion? So, so moved. Second. All right, any discussion? All right, Melissa, please call roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchick. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The uh, motion carried to approve for first reading the policies and press issue 111 and policies 5, 330, and 7, 270 uh, as presented in the attached drafts. Next up would be the legislative committee, but they have not met, so uh, it is the financial advisory committee. We did meet on April 28th, 2023. This was a little bit atypical because we spent the majority of the time uh, actually discussing the five-year financial plan. Typically, you know, a lot of times when the FAC meets, it's right before a meeting. 
um, this was happened right after our financial workshop. So we spent a lot of time reviewing the same materials that we reviewed here, taking into account, diving into a, a little bit more of the numbers that member Ocha had uh, recommended in the previous workshop. And we started talking about ways that we can improve those presentations in, in years going forward. We spent a little bit of time talking about the owner's rep, and then we touched a little bit on the lunch program uh, that we're still in the process of. But it was pretty much, uh, it spent a lot of time reviewing uh, with the FAC the item that's coming up for today and we do have support from the Financial Advisory Committee on the current five-year plan. Uh, any? No. Okay. Great job. Great. Any questions or comments? All right, and that concludes my report. All right, the district leadership team has not met, neither has the Health and Wellness Committee. So that brings us to public comment. This is an opportunity for members of the audience to share public comment with the board, but it is not intended to be a time for members of the public to engage in a dialogue with the board. Issues raised during public comment may be added to future agendas or addressed by administrative staff as appropriate. The board has allotted 30 minutes tonight for public comment. We ask that you keep your comments to three minute limit to allow everyone the opportunity to speak. At this time, I have not seen any cards come in. No. Is that accurate? That is um, accurate. So I'll do a last call. Is there any public comment? All right, then that moves us on to our consent agenda. Are there any items a board member would like to have considered separately? Right. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda consisting of the personnel report and financial statements consisting of the list of bills and summary? So moved. Second. Second. All right, Melissa, well, please go roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Joshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchek. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried. The consent agenda has been approved as presented in the packet of materials. Move on to recommendations for action. First up is the five-year financial plan. Is there a motion to approve the 2024 through 2028 financial plan as presented? So moved. Second. All right, any discussion? All right, let's please call roll. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Joshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye, the motion carried to approve the 2024 through 2028 financial plan as presented. Next up, we have a recommendation for an owner's representative. Is there a motion to approve the contract for construction service owner's representative with Huffman Keel Partners of Madison, Wisconsin at a total cost of $1,311,000? So moved. Second. All right, any discussion? All right, Melissa, please go roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Joshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to approve the contract for construction service owner's representative with Huffman Keel Partners of Madison, Wisconsin at a total cost of $1,311,000. You already came up. Um, if you have any other words, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, again, uh, I, I appreciate it. Um, you know, we, we, we look at various projects and we know that uh, if you want a relatively easy project, you build an elementary school in a cornfield. And uh, that's not what we'll be doing here. Uh, substantial renovation um, of uh, 11 elementary schools, two middle schools uh, will be filled with challenges. Uh, and we hope to be uh, your strong partners in uh, being triumphant in those challenges. So again, thank you very much. Welcome aboard. We look Thank forward you. to all the work that's coming. So we're very excited. Thank you. All right. We have now the honorable dismissal of part-time educational support staff. Pursuant to section 1023.5 of the School Code of Illinois, it's 105 ILCS 510-23.5, be it resolved by the Board of Education of Downers Grove Grade School District Number 58, DuPage County, Illinois, that the part-time educational support personnel employee listed in the resolution attached under item 14 should it be is it 14 it should it be 13 C yes uh, 13 C on tonight's agenda posted on board docs shall be honorably dismissed and not reemployed for the 2022 through 2023 school term because of the decision of the board to decrease the number of part-time educational support personnel employees employed all right, I now will entertain the motion to adopt this resolution regarding the honorable dismissal of part-time educational support personnel employees. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. All right, any discussion? All right, Melissa, please go roll. Member Joshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. <clears throat> Member Hannes. Aye. 
Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchick. Aye. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried uh, to adapt the resolution regarding the honorable dismissal of part-time educational support personnel employees. We have a recommendation for a Chromebook purchase. Is there a motion to approve the purchase of 600 Acer 311 Chromebooks with included Google device licenses for a total cost of $142,800? Moved. Second. Any discussion? Melissa, please go roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Hughes. <coughs> Aye. The uh, motion carried uh, to approve the purchase of 600 Acer 311 Chromebooks with included Google device licenses for a total cost of $142,800. We have a recommendation for surplus equipment. Is there a motion to designate as surplus equipment uh, five computer charging carts and one clipper carpet machine? So moved. Second. Any discussion? <laughs> All right, Melissa, please go roll. Member Ellis. Aye. <laughs> Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Oh. Member Harris. <laughs> that was my fault. Keep it. Member Olchik. Aye. <laughs> Member Weiner. Aye. Member Joshi. Aye. And Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to designate as surplus equipment five computer charging carts and one clipper carpet machine. Uh, we have the approval of a resignation agreement. Is there a motion to approve the resignation agreement with teacher Catherine Nickel? So moved. Second. All right, any discussion? Right. Melissa, please call roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Joshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to approve the resignation agreement with teacher Catherine Nickel. Uh, we have a recommendation for a 10 year life safety survey for Henry Puffer. Is there a motion to approve the application of the ISB? Uh, with to Isby for the 10 year life safety survey at Henry Puffer. So moved. Second. All right, Melissa, please call roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The uh, motion carried to approve the application to Isby for a 10 year life safety survey at Henry Puffer. And then, is there a motion to approve the donation agreement with Kingsley PTA in the amount of $11,216.60 for the construction of an accessible playground at Kingsley School? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Melissa, please go roll. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to approve the donation agreement with Kingsley PTA in the amount of $11,216.60 for the construction of an accessible playground at Kingsley School. Tonight we have a consent, uh, construction consent agenda. Are there any items a board member would like to have considered separately? All right. Is there a motion to approve the con uh, construction consent agenda consisting of the bids as presented in the packet of materials? So moved. Second. All right. Uh, Melissa, please go roll. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Olchik. Aye. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried. The constru construction consent agenda has been approved as presented in the packet of materials. All right, we have a few announcements. Uh, Monday, May 15th and May 16th at 6 p.m. will be the strategic planning committee that will take place at O'Neill Middle School. And then on Monday, June 12th at 7 p.m. will be our next regular board meeting. We don't have to go to close, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. So with that, um, yeah. all right. Um, that wraps up this meeting. So I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor? Any Aye. opposed? All right, the meeting is now adjourned at 7.30. I'll meet you guys in the council room at 7.45. Oh, do we, do we have to leave?